so Lindsay and I will be presenting now. Um, Lindsay, why don't you introduce yourself at, while I pull up the slide um, presentation? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lindsay Whitaker. I own a business called Lindsay Whitaker Designs. Um, basically, my uh, position is um, I'm an innovation marketing specialist. And so assen essentially what that means is I create marketing materials for inventors ages uh, anywhere from 1 to 99. So I create cell sheets, virtual prototypes, anything that you need essentially as a um, as an inventor to present your idea to investors or licensees or companies um, to be able to present the idea that you have. So that's my specialty. Um, my background is in patent drafting and graphic design, and I've found my niche with my business and my passion in helping inventors specifically. Awesome, thank you. I am going to try to share our screen. Let's see if this works. Can you guys see the presentation here? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so I am co-presenting with Lindsay. Um, just uh, for people who are just joining, I'm Susie Burphy. I am an inventor, entrepreneur, and um, I am the director of Kid Invent Mentor, a company that helps support kids in uh, learning innovation and uh, helping them find a path to market. Um, Lindsay and I will be co-presenting this, and I will do an intro, and then I'm turning it over to the expert, because she's more of an expert than I am on this topic. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about marketing materials, uh, sell sheets, virtual prototypes, videos, patent drawings, and when to get them. Marketing material. What is the point of marketing material in this world? Well, you have something that you want to share and we have to find the best way with people who have very little time to attract them to your product. And so there are a variety of different ways that Lindsay's going to go through here on what we use to send to potential companies to show them what you have to offer. So with that said, Lindsay, uh, I will turn it over to you. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Susie. Um, so as she said, uh, the thing that we'll be really focusing on for this segment and the thing I specialize is in marketing materials. So we're going to explain what they are. Um, I'll read this and then um, maybe add a few more uh, additional comments uh, as necessary. So uh, marketing materials are like cool tools that show off your amazing invention. They include stuff like flyers, which in our industry, they often are referred to as sell sheets. 3D renderings, also known as virtual prototypes. We'll be diving into that more as well if you're not familiar with those terms. Um, also videos, social media graphics, and a lot more. Um, these types of materials are important because they help others see your invention and what the features are, what the benefits are, and its value. They help create interest, awareness, and persuade people like customers or investors to support your fantastic, unique idea. Um, so again, those things, uh, we're going to dive into each, but to summarize, um, the main things that you'll usually see when you're talking about marketing materials for this industry are sell sheets, virtual prototypes, um, and videos. Uh, so here we're going to go ahead and dive into cell sheets. So on the left, you'll see some cell sheets that I've uh, created. Some of them are for uh, games, some of them are for products, um, some of them are uh, real inventions, others are just uh, portfolio pieces to give you an example of what a cell sheet looks like. There's a lot of different types of cell sheets. Um, so as part of my services, I also do offer people help with um, strategizing, and I know that that's part of what Susie does with her business as well. Um, we help, you know, can kind of guide guide you guys, especially kids, and, and what type of cell sheet might work best for you. Uh, but for the purpose of this presentation, we'll just talk about what a cell sheet is sort of more generally. Um, so a cell sheet, uh, which most people would think of as a flyer. Uh, it's a little bit different than a flyer because it usually has very specific things. Um, again, depending on time, we may or may not break down what those differences are. Uh, but it's basically a, a flyer. It's simple, but it's a really. It still needs to be really cool looking and interesting. 
um, but it's a single page document and it should be really easy, concise, simple to understand. Um, the main thing that you're showing there are the benefits of your idea. And a person should essentially, a good rule of thumb is you should be able to understand um, what the cell sheet what is conveying as far as what your invention is, what those benefits are within 10 seconds or less. Um, things to consider when creating a cell sheet are highlighting the key benefits and advantages of your invention. Not so much the features, but the, ben the benefits. Um, include images of your prototype or your virtual prototype. And sometimes you can even use professional illustrations that demonstrate how to use them in the, in, uh, how, to, how to use the invention, as you'll see on the bottom left cell sheet there. Um, there's sort of three box storyboards, which help show a process. Um, that's sort of the basics of a cell sheet. Okay, thank you. And let me know if you have any questions, Susie, if anything comes up. Yeah. Okay, and next we're going to dive into virtual prototypes. So oftentimes when you create an invention, you might have a physical prototype. Um, sometimes that physical prototype looks great, and you can just take images of that to use in your marketing materials. Other times that's not the case. Even if you do have a great prototype, um, oftentimes people will still use virtual prototypes uh, just because they look better for presentation uh, most of the time. So what a virtual prototype is, is it's actually a series of 3D renderings of your product idea. And what is a 3D rendering? Well, it's the, the process of creating a 3D rendering begins by making a 3D model of your idea. Um, which I think is pretty cool. And so then the designer, the 3D model designer, they essentially take pictures of the 3D model using their fancy programs. Um, and then those pictures are called 3D renderings. And that's what we call in our industry oftentimes a virtual prototype. And so it's a digital representation of your idea via 3D modeling. Um, so once you've got that virtual prototype and you've got those images of your invention, uh, you can basically go conquer the world, or you can go ahead and make a cell sheet with it or a video to present your idea. All things, you know, all of the above are good. <laughs> um, and I just like to add, um, virtual prototypes are something that you can use um, to show what it would look like finished but you still at home probably need to make it out of something like cardboard or some other components so that you work with how it actually works. But this is a good way to show what you envision it looking like in the future, but you're still working through how it functions at home. Um, so you can put your virtual prototype just like we did on this cell sheet but at home, you still have your model that you're working through your testing. So this doesn't replace your trying to test how it will function. Um, so I just wanted to add that piece. Yeah, it's a great point. And oftentimes, um, one of the services I provide also is the 3D modeling, creating the virtual prototypes. Um, so oftentimes, we're taking images, photographs that people have taken of their, their um, crude prototypes, if you will, as reference to build the 3D model prototype. And they'll say, well, you know, it really shouldn't have duct tape here. So make that look like it's plastic <laughs> yeah, duct tape and things like that. So those are good for references to build your 3D model, which is a more polished version of your idea. Exactly. Okay. Next. Next is a video. I know probably none of you young viewers here need any explanation of what a marketing <laughs> video is, but we'll go ahead and cover it anyways. Um, I guess probably the main thing that um, this audience might uh, benefit from understanding is in the cell sheet, um, you can embed your video link. And so basically whatever you can't fit into your cell sheet, because it is a really simple, clear, concise document, you might make a video to expand on that information or do a demonstration of whatever um, your product is or what it's solving. And uh, we can basically put a graphic into your cell sheet that when a person can click on in a PDF document, which will open up the video um for people to view so i'll read this real quick um also so like i said no doubt you are all probably very familiar with marketing videos um but a few pointers you need to make it short it should be about one minute probably should not be over two i would say would be the, the very max um, the video should communicate the benefits again of your idea i should tell a story about how it solves a problem or how it fulfills a need 
Um, and again, like I said, it can be embedded into a, a cell sheet as a, as a link to be viewed. Um, major pointer there as well. Usually these uh, videos are posted on YouTube. If you set it as unlisted on YouTube and you share that link, then only people who have the link can view the video. So it still remains private, but shareable. Great, Lindsay. And I just want to add, when you um, embed, like she was talking about right here, you can add it in. Um, this is, you're se sending your one page attractive document, and then your supporting video is really one of the best ways to grab attention, to show all different ways that people can look and digest your product. So, um, Definitely yeah, can, two important pieces. Yeah, you can sort of use your cell sheet as the the, the de delivery tool essentially for your video. So. Yes, absolutely. And the video is not always needed, by the way. Um, and they don't need to be anything fancy for these purposes. Um, but, you know, that's where somewhere someone who might be able to mentor you may be able to give you a better idea on whether the video is important or not, um, those types of things. So um, the next thing we'll dive into are patent drawings. Um, they're a little different than what you'd think of for a marketing material, but still um, very important in the process. Um, so patent drawings are very important because they safeguard your invention. Um, they're like special blueprints that show exactly how your invention works. So when you have a patent, it means that you legally own your creation and nobody else can copy or steal your idea. Nobody likes a copycat or a stealer. So this protects all the hard work that you've put into your marketing, um, into, sorry, into making your invention um, and making it something that's unique and special. And so by providing detailed and accurate illustrations, then the provisional patent drawings um, help the patent examiners and poten potential investors understand what your idea is and what the boundaries of your inventions are. Those are oftentimes called claims. Um, so it's important to have professional looking patent drawings, even if you're only filing a PPA. And uh, the reason I like to explain that is because if you're going to ask an investor to in, uh, or a person or a company to invest in you, you need to show that you're invested in your own idea and yourself as well. And so even though with a PPA, um, they might not have as strict requirements as a formal patent, uh, but again, it's important to show up in a professional way so people understand that you're invested in your own idea too. Good point, Lindsay. I think you covered that well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And a home stretch. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Sorry, I was just trying to check my time here. All right, so obtaining marketing materials and patent drawings, the when and how. So marketing materials should be made once you've done two things. First thing the important before you're going to spend your time and your efforts, research online to make sure your idea doesn't already exist. You might be surprised. <laughs> Number two, make sure you've really thought out your idea thoroughly. So this is going to go to Susie's point she was making earlier, well, where um, one way to really do that is you can make a prototype at home. So you can use it, you can make it using craft supplies, clay, paper, wood, or any other thing that you can find around the home that might be appropriate to build something. It doesn't always um, have to function like the real thing, but maybe it looks similar. That's called a looks like prototype. Or on the other hand, maybe it does function properly, but it doesn't look very good. <laughs> but so that's called a works-like prototype. Um, and so basically you just need to make sure it's possible that um, the idea can look or function in the way that you have it imagined in your mind. Um, and if both of those boxes check off, then that's great. It's time to get going on your marketing uh, and protecting your idea. So there are a lot of great videos and books online to help that are free or um, easily available. Uh, but if you do want to fast track your process, that's where someone like Susie and myself can um, come in and help and offer help. So with uh, the Kid Invent Mentors, um, they offer mentoring programs special tailored to kids uh, with awesome ideas, just like you guys. Um, and then uh, also I have a specialized skills and expertise. Um, I've been working in the industry for over 13 years in creating all the marketing materials that we've discussed today, as well as patent drawings. Um, so together, Susie and I uh, can mentor you along your path and help you bring your ideas to life and we'd be honored to. Wow. 
Thank you. Arturo Thank you. since I presented, yes. I don't feel I should ask myself a question. So do you have any before we wrap up? <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're like, like uh, out of time on the next presenters already here, but I mean, you, you make uh, a, an exceptional combination with the invention innovator part and the graphic design and marketing. Really, really powerful presentation. Uh, we need to have you here and extend because I mean, I know that our young innovators I want to know more about what tools to use. I mean, for the sell sheet, uh, what tools to use for the video, even though they may already know some of them, uh, your professional advice will always be like uh, very, very important. And also for those virtual prototypes, there are bunches of tools that, that can be used. I mean, of course, some require the skills and knowledge, but there are some of them that could like, you know, sketch up and this kind of tools. And, and we need to have you back and, uh, and, and look for maybe one hour slot. <laughs> so promise. <laughs> Promise us that you're going to be back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we'd both love to come back. I know I would um, and uh, expand on anything that I can and offer, you know, additional tips and tricks of things that kids can do without uh, professional help. And then, you know, options for uh, getting that professional help when it's necessary and possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, the recording will do, do show your uh, contacts and... Uh... I know that when the, all of the videos are edited, like people will be able to reach you. But thank you very much, Lindsay and Susie. Sure. Thanks, Lindsay. Appreciate your help. <laughs> all right. You betcha. Thanks, everybody. Take care. And thank all you. Right. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Ciao.